All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Busy Life Podcast. My name is Julie, and today we have with me again my fiance, Ryan. Ryan, say hi to everybody. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is a no phone zone, sir. Please remove all all tablets at, at this time. Okay, I'm focused. Thank you. Thank I'm you. Locked in. Let's go. Thank you. Actually, today's episode, I kind of asked Ryan on a whim to do this with me, and it's because I've been wanting to do this episode for a little bit now, and I figured the best way to get a real, authentic response from him was to kind of just wing it and. I mean that in the best way. I am really not somebody who just wings things. <laughs> I like to plan things. I am a planner. I'm a teacher. You know, I I like to stick to a plan. So my plan was to surprise him. <laughs> and the topic for today is all about anxiety part two. So if you haven't listened to my first part, I highly recommend that you do. In that episode, I really talk a lot about my own struggles with anxiety, what anxiety looks like for me, what is anxiety for somebody who is not familiar with it or somebody who has never dealt with it before. And actually Ryan and I have a a pretty, I think a pretty good example of it because I think until you met me, you had never really met anybody with anxiety, right? No, actually you told me on our first date. I did? You said, before we get into this or go any further, I got to tell you that I have, you know, this problem with anxiety. Oh. And I was like, okay, that's fine. I mean, I didn't really know <laughs> what that entailed, but, um, you know, you gave me a warning and I was like, I didn't care. And honestly, I mean, I feel like I did that for a couple reasons. Number one, because if you weren't into it and you were like, well, then sounds like she's too needy. This bitch needs to go. Then I was going to be like, well, then fuck you too. But <laughs> <laughs> so that was reason number one. But reason number two is because I had been in relationships before where that was too much for them to handle. And I'm thinking back to a couple of them specifically where I would say things like, yeah, you know, tonight I'm just, I'm feeling really anxious or I can tell that I'm about to have a panic attack and the amount of times that I felt like I got dismissed was enough for me to realize a, I was with the wrong person and B that my needs were important to me and to find somebody who also felt like my needs were important was exactly what I needed. So I figured, first of all, I knew you were going to respect it just cause I, 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 I could tell, but at the same time, I was like, look, I'm not going down this route again, where I feel like I have to defend myself or I have to explain myself. I had one, I had one ex in particular where I would call him with panic attacks just because I was like, I just want to talk it out. You know, usually for me, a panic attack feels like, you know, my heart rate goes up. I kind of get this like dry, weird taste in my mouth. Um, I get really shaky and I just need to like take deep breaths. And usually with the deep breaths, like I'll do the hold it and then where it's like the shorter breathing in, holding it for a second and then longer breathing out. It's kind of hard to say like, oh, I breathe in for for four, hold for four and exhale for eight because in the moment it's it's really not about like counting it's for me it's just about calming myself down and recognizing where i'm at so another thing for me though is i want to talk to somebody i want to get it, it off my chest i want to be reassured that i'm going to be okay and i remember he would ignore me like i would call and it was like oh yeah i missed your call sorry and he it's almost like he knew <laughs> probably didn't but I don't know, maybe he did. And um, I would then tell him like, yeah, I'm kind of having a panic attack right now. Um, I don't really know what to do. I'm feeling really stressed. And he would just be like, oh, well, sorry. And I just felt so dismissed because I've had anxiety for a long time. If, if you listen to my first episode, all about anxiety, I talk a lot about how for me, my anxiety, I, I probably started way before college, but it really became 
it, it felt like it became a part of me in college the most. Like that was the four hours of sleep a night. That was the overeating, the lack of exercise. And to the point where I literally would wake up in the morning sometimes and look in the mirror and be like, I'm probably going to have a panic attack today. Like that's just what it was like. So anyway, with that being said, I just wanted to, first of all, Ryan's putting the mic down. We are not done here. <laughs> trying to move without making noise. Oh. <laughs> I wanted to actually, so I said earlier, I didn't care when you told me that you had anxiety, but I don't want it to seem like I actually didn't care that you struggle with anxiety. No, no, I, no, I knew what you meant. What I meant was that um, I didn't care in the fact that I still wanted to date you and like see you and go out with you. I and I wasn't going to be something that's like going to scare me away. But I was uh, appreciative that you were honest and upfront. But yeah, I mean, I remember I, I didn't really think much of it just because I never, you know, been with someone that has that issue or struggles with it like you do. And but I, I just thought to myself that, you know, I wanted to keep seeing you. So it wasn't going to well and so the reason i have ryan on here is not so much to just talk about you know me and what how ryan experiences my anxiety but more of what it's like to have a partner who has anxiety whether you're the partner who has it or your partner has it you know what are some ways that you can support each other what are some ways that you can let your partner know that they're there for you and i kind of figured the best expert on that it would be ryan because we you know we do this together and i am so open with him about how i'm feeling in the moment and no matter how silly it was because that was the whole thing with the phone calls is it was like i definitely had a little bit of like hypochondry hypochondrism hypochond i was a hypochondriac that's the word <laughs> i was i was I, what there you go there you go yeah I felt like a hypochondriac where it didn't matter what anybody said. If my chest was hurting, I was like, oh my God, I have a heart, I'm having a heart attack. That's it. But after the panic attack would subside, I was like, I'm okay. And it sounds silly, but if you have anxiety, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I kind of just wanted to pick at Ryan's brain a little bit and see what he thinks are some ways that really do make it worthwhile, you know? Like Walk me through what it's like for you when I roll over in the middle of the night and I wake you up and I tell you, Ryan, I'm having a panic attack. I would say my first thought is to just, you know, calm you down as much as I can and really try to reassure you that everything is okay and try to get your mind away from the negative thoughts that are seem to be building in your, in your mind that just, you know, are building upon each other. And I can tell that, you know, the more you think about whatever it is that's giving you the anxiety, the more it's getting worse. So I'm trying to, you know, just kind of ground everything down a little bit and like, you know, get it back to a level of thinking space. How I do think, you do that? Like when you say you try to, what are the things that you, you do? I mean, I just, I sort of just, um, try to lay everything out and explain things to you, like explain why it's not what you think it is or why it's not as bad as it's, as you're making it out to be. And just come at it from a, you know, a different mindset that you, I know that you will trust and listen to. So, um, you know, I'm not gonna try to make things worse or uh, scare you even more by introducing different concepts or, or, things that you're not um, understanding. I'm just trying to keep it simple and and um, just be there for you so that you can just slowly calm down and give you that space and the time to really just um, decompress, I guess. What's it like for you being somebody who, you said you've never experienced a panic attack before, right? Um, I mean, I've had certain times when I, you know, I felt that panic rising, but I don't think it, not to the level that I, that I think that you've experienced it. No, I don't think I've had that. What's it, what was it like to watch for the first time? Uh, well, the first time for me when it, with you was on the phone. 
Oh, really? Yeah. You have a great memory. <laughs> I don't remember this. No, I remember it clearly because um, you started to, you were, I mean, we were talking and you started to go faster and faster. And like, you were just, you know, your thoughts were, I could tell your thoughts were just racing and you were getting more and more upset and freaked out. And it was sort of like that thing where you just can't get a word and you have to let them tire themselves out <laughs> pretty much so i'm just like all right sit back just wait for her to need to catch her breath <laughs> and then i'll and then i'll i will come in um and just you know do whatever i can to to just uh calm the situation down but i think for you in that moment you just needed to really let it all out and um you know, I kind of just want to give you that space to be able to do that and and then just be like, all right, so this is what you're upset about. Let's lay out what the problem is and then we'll talk about what we can do to make it better to fix it and just do it in a slow, calm, <laughs> level-headed manner. <laughs> gotcha. Do you as remember what it was can. about? Um. Well, there was the time that you had the heart problem, like the chest pain, and you were convinced that it was a heart attack. Oh, are you talking about recently when we called 911? <laughs> oh, yeah, that wasn't over the phone, but yes, that wasn't. Oh, my time. gosh, I did this over the phone, too. See, the other thing, too, is I feel like when when these ha moments happen, for me, I kind of black out a little bit afterwards, or I guess during. Like, I remember it while it's happening, and I'm fully aware of what's happening, but then for me, they usually happen at night and I'll wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh yeah, that happened. But I probably couldn't tell you all the details. And like I said, the really interesting thing for me is just that Ryan has never experienced panic attacks as badly as I do. So I, I always wondered just what it was like for somebody to, to watch, you know, and I guess for a while I felt really judged, I, not by Ryan, but by other people, I felt a lot of judgment of oh, you know, you're being silly or you're being ridiculous. So can't you just take a deep breath or you just need to relax? And it's like, no shit. <laughs> like, I don't want to feel like this right now. I'm not choosing to have my heart rate go up to 182 while I'm sitting on a plane. You know what I mean? Well, I've been guilty of that too. Is, is think, I mean, not always saying it, but like, you know, especially early on, I was just thinking like, why is this, why does this seem like such a big deal to her? Like it's not that big of a deal. But as I learned and, you know, was with you longer it's i've, I've kind of uh, grown able to be able to uh, i guess understand more and realize that it's not about i mean obviously it's not about judging and that's not what you want to do but you want to be able to just uh you know really listen and try to understand where they're coming from yeah so uh, the judging is the worst thing that you can do i think it, minimizing is also a, a, not a good strategy to go for there of minimizing what they, the problem they have in their head i think so too because in that moment it's real mm -hmm. like i'm going to refer back to the 911 topic that i just mentioned not that long ago um <clears throat> ryan and i were laying in bed and for me i think i mentioned this already they usually happen at night so I just remember rolling over and I felt kind of funny and I was like, oh shit. And if you've had them, you kind of realize when they're about to start, your body just has this feeling and I don't really know how to explain it, but you know what it is. And all of a sudden you're just like, oh fuck, I'm going to have a panic attack, aren't I? And it's so crazy because <laughs> it's true. I, I was literally talking to one of my coworkers about this today. She was like, Julie, I was literally watching YouTube and then all of a sudden I could feel my heart racing. And I've been to doctors before, and I hope I know there's some people listening to this who are like, Julie, have you been to a doctor to get this checked out? Yes, I have. My doctors have all said, you know, you just have anxiety. I experience frequent panic attacks. That's just how my body responds to a lot of the trauma and stress that I've been through in my life, no matter if it's capital T or, or lowercase t trauma, but it's trauma nonetheless. And like I said, my coworker was telling me that she was like, I need to calm down too. And she said she was watching YouTube videos, but it didn't matter because your body still experiences that trauma and it still holds on to it. Even if you're ignoring it or even if you're trying to 
trying to deal with it, it could still happen at any moment. So that night I was laying in bed and I guess it kind of happens more of like when I'm laying in bed and I can just let my mind wander, you know, for, I, I know I can speak for a lot of people who have anxiety, but we try to keep ourselves busy and we try to focus on other things to take our mind off of the anxiety. So I just, I don't know. It was just one of those nights. And I wrote, I laid there for a bit. I was laying flat. I put my hand over my heart and I put my hand over my stomach and I just took, tried to take some deep breaths, but it's almost like you just have to write it out. Like, you know, like when you get a cold and everyone's like, Oh, just like, you know, give it a week. You'll feel better. It was like that. Like you just needed to write it out. And I don't need to do this, but I usually wake up Ryan because I want to make sure that I'm not dying. Now, for a little bit of context, I haven't had a panic attack this bad since college, or at least in the past couple of years. It's been at least two to six years since I've had a panic attack like this. And I feel like I would remember that. And it's because I've been so overwhelmed with wedding planning. I was recently in grad school and I was working two jobs. I mean, it was just, it was a lot. And there was a lot of other little things going on as well. But long story short is it it creeps up on you. You know, your body never forgets. Um, Your body keeps the score and it'll kind of come out in whatever way that your body wants it to. So I was laying in bed and that time it just scared me because it hadn't happened like that in a while. So I just wanted to know that Ryan was there, God forbid, in case something were to happen. And I just, I rolled over and I was like, Ryan, this time it's really scary. Like my chest is really, it feels really funny. My heart rate is really high right now. I kind of feel like I can't breathe, you know. It was just a little bit more intense than it usually was. And I just wasn't sure. So naturally, in your anxious panic attack state, I went right into, I'm probably having a heart attack. I've never experienced one of those. I don't know what that feels like, but this is really scary. And maybe it's one of those things. Now, saying that now, when I'm past that moment, I recognize that it wasn't. But I also am not a doctor. So how am I supposed to know? So I woke up Ryan and... I told him, I said, look, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what's happening, but I think we need to call 911. And then do you want to kind of jump in with your side of the story? Why do you look like you're smiling? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I remember I called 911 and um, it was like three in the morning. You were freaking out and I couldn't really do much to get you to calm down. So I called 911. And I was telling them that, you know, what your symptoms were, what you were telling me. And basically, um, they said if she needs to come in, then bring her in. I mean, we have the hospital right across the street, which was nice. But thankfully, it didn't come to that. You know, you were able to just, you know, take deep breaths and calm yourself. And and um, and everything was fine. But, yeah, it was scary in the moment. I'm sure it was very scary for you, but, um, luckily, I mean, you know, I didn't, I didn't think that you were having a heart attack, but I'm not going to, you know, on the off chance that you might be, I'm not going to be like, oh, that's nothing. Right. You know, you can't, you can't do that. You got to take anything like that super seriously. Exactly. And I, something I remember she said on the phone was, Cause in the moment, as I started to kind of come out of it, I was like, maybe this isn't a, like, maybe this is just a really bad panic attack. Maybe it's not a heart attack, but the, the trouble with the breathing and the chest pains, I was like, this still really scares me. So I don't know, you know, like, like Ryan said, it's really not something that you should take lightly, regardless of how minor it is. So Ryan asked um, ask them on the phone, you know, well, how do, how do we know the difference? Like, is there something I can tell her to kind of help her calm down, help her realize it's not a heart attack. And I don't know if this is correct or not. This is not my expertise, but she was like, there really isn't anything different. You'd have to bring her here. Yeah. That's what they said. And I was and like, said, well, they basically shit. Said we can't tell without you having, without her being here. So, I mean, it was, what are we going to do? Right. And 
I was ready to take you to the hospital, but I wanted to see if we could just sit and calm down for a minute mm -hmm. and just sort of take it from there, which, you know, thankfully worked. Um, but, you know, if we had to, then we're going like, to we're going to go to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. I, I realize in moments like that, I have a massive fear of just something being wrong with my body. I don't like it when I get sick. I don't like it when something feels wrong. Like, you know, I, I always tell everybody I have a funny left knee because sometimes there's pain, sometimes there's not. And I've been to a physical therapist. Like, I'm not afraid of going to the doctors. I go to the doctors all the time. I just, like, you know, whenever I need to, but I don't like having something be wrong. But that's another thing. You're young, you're healthy and active. In my mind, there was no reason for you to be having heart attack. And so, I think it's important that I could bring that sort of mindset to the situation to like think, okay, why would this be happening? Like try to think as logical as I can because you were just experiencing all these emotions. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I was thinking. I was like, why would she be having a heart attack? Like this doesn't make sense. But again, you have to take stuff like that seriously. But that's why in my I was thinking there's I just I can't believe that would be what it is, but you know, I'm gonna I'm going to call, you know, I'm not going to just be like, no, we're not going to call, you know? Well, that, and you, I mean, gosh, you hear things on the news all the time. Like, oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it is possible. It could still happen to someone like you. Yeah. But you know, this is not, this I remember saying. someone, one of my friends telling me that she knew somebody, whether it was personally or just, she knew their name, like in a high school, like a high school football player who was, who had a heart attack. So in those moments when I'm having these oh shit moments, you know, whether it's my knee, whether it's really bad cramps, whether it's, you know, for us ladies spotting or the chest pains, you know, whatever it is, that is where my mind goes. And it takes a lot of willpower, a lot of, you know, being aware, hey, that could happen, but it could also be nothing. However, we are going to take the precautions and do what we need to do to help ease the stress. But also just like Ryan said, you know what? I am healthy. I'm going to be okay. No matter what this is, I can face this. Things like that. I really do think help. But in the moment, that's definitely not what you're thinking. So you have to practice it outside of the moment as frequently as you can. So that in the moment, it gets a little bit better, hopefully over time. And that's something that I've been working on for years. Like I said, anxiety, anxiety and I are no strangers. So to have such a really scary panic attack like that, after I can confidently say years of having anxiety, I have learned a lot of different mechanisms. I've learned a lot of strategies that work for me, ones that don't. It was just kind of scary in the moment to see things not work, which it, it did then lead to a, oh shit, and back to the hyperventilating moments again. So it's, it's scary. And if you've never experienced it before, I guess all I ask is please don't judge because in that moment, it is really scary for that person. And that's just, you know, a lot of this has just been about panic attacks. But even the little stuff, you know, there's a lot of times that it doesn't have to be a panic attack. It can be just like an, oh shit, Ryan, do you think that I need to call the doctor? Or Ryan, do you think that I need to cancel this? Or, oh my gosh, do I need to go and pick up my dogs because it's supposed to thunderstorm? And, you know, even though they're in at an inside daycare, do I need to go and get them? And for me, one of the best things that has helped me is, is knowing that. I have Ryan. I know that he's not going to judge me. I know that he is there to rationalize with me. But if you don't have a Ryan or if you don't have somebody that you trust, it doesn't have to be a significant other. It can be a family member. It can be a really close friend. I do have a lot of friends that I know I could call if I need to and my family as well. But it is important, I do think, to practice these things with yourself too because you are your biggest advocate. You are the one who's going to take care of yourself. And at the end of the day, I mean, Ryan could tell me all these things and, oh, Julie, you know, you are young, you are healthy. Like that is scary. And we can go to the doctor if you want, but I think you're going to be okay. I could choose not to listen to that. 
and I could choose to just be like, well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm freaking out there. There, I, I must have a kidney stone or I must've broken my ankle or I, I must've anything. I mean, you name it. I probably thought about it. It probably freaked me out. And yeah, it's just, it's just definitely not something to be joked around with. And I wanted to come back to this because I knew that this was an important episode. I know that one of the most important things when it comes to having anxiety is having someone to support you. And I think, you know, Ryan does a good job of it. And I know that there's a lot of other people who can trust somebody in their life when they're having anxiety. So all I can say is if you're listening to this and you have anxiety, please know that you're not alone. Please know that if you don't have somebody, I am a safe space for you because I get it a hundred percent, no matter if it's as if if it's as little as you think that you're going to get fired because you're going to be five minutes late, or if it's as big as, as what I experienced where I genuinely wasn't sure if I was like what was happening to me or not. I'm here for you. I'm a safe space. And if you've never experienced it, I really hope that there's something that you took from this. And I hope you realize that if you have a family member, a friend, or you end up meeting somebody or your partner tells you, yeah, you know, I experience a lot of anxiety and the same thing. I can't speak a ton on depression, but I have experienced depression before I have it not as, you know, it's not as prominent in my life as my anxiety, but it's the same thing please don't judge somebody for their symptoms or for the way that they're feeling because they are a human and they are entitled to feel every, everything. And if you can't handle it, then maybe you don't deserve to be around them. But in the end, just give everybody love. You have so much love to give and you just have to choose it. Is there something you were going to add? I saw you bring the mic to your face. Yeah, I just wanted to add that I think there's a misconception between like um, people that suffer from like severe anxiety, like what we've been talking about, mm -hmm. and then like, you know, just your general everyday anxiety that, you know, everyone goes through. And I mean, I'm thinking about like, you know, stuff that I've done, like, you know, at Ocean City going in the water and staying down <laughs> and you just like freaking out. Well, and a little like, backstory on that is Ryan, like that. <laughs> Ryan went into the ocean at Ocean City and Ryan doesn't like to just swim like everybody else in like the three feet, like Ryan, Ryan's seven feet tall. So he goes as far as he can fucking go past where you're supposed to be swimming like almost out to where the boats are <laughs> i mean and he loves to play this game where he'll go underwater and try to see how long he can hold his breath for so we're at the beach and the lifeguard is looking in his general direction and he's his head's not popping up and i realize what's happening i'm like oh shit Ryan's playing his fucking game and he is in the ocean and he hasn't come up yet. And this lifeguard thinks that he's either drowning or got eaten by a shark or something. And I knew he was fine, but I also knew what was happening. And then because the lifeguard was freaking out, I started freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, Ryan comes up from the water, like maybe a minute and a half later, and the lifeguard's waving at him and like telling him to come just in. Waving happily back. I know, right? <laughs> it's just like, hey man, what's up? And I'm like, no, you need to come back. I'm like, what is the big deal? Why is everyone screaming at me to come back in? I'm yes. having a great time. It was I didn't many think people. Was wrong at all. Well, but I guess they thought differently. <laughs> So Ryan considers that minor anxiety when in reality, I'm here thinking he got e eaten by something. Yeah, but like, in, it wasn't like the same feeling is what I mean. Like, it's not no. like when you have these like really bad panic attacks or nothing it seems like it can be, you know, can, it seems like everything is going downhill really fast. Right. And You're talking about I'm more talking situational about, like, anxiety. Yeah, just like, and like things that you laugh about later, which is, you know, with the panic attack and the 911 you don't really laugh about that that's something that really affects you like 
for a long time. This is just mm-hmm. something that I was like, oh. Yes. Wow. Ryan just wanted to be a mermaid. Merman. <laughs> <laughs> so. Like swimming, so. <laughs> but no, it's true. You know, I would say the biggest takeaways are don't judge. Um, ask them what they need, you know, say, hey, what can I do for you right now? And maybe in that moment they can't respond. But get to know the person, you know, do they like hugs? Do they want a pat on the back? Do they want you to just sit with them? Ask them what they need. Um, And then I would just say, you know, just be there, you know, whatever that means. Yeah, don't minimize. Don't minimize. That's a good one. Or any whatever issues the person may be having. Mm -hmm. I would say that one of the worst things to do is to just kind of brush it off to tell someone to suck it up. Oh yeah. No, 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 Um, no, no, no. Don't judge what the situation is or what they're telling you. I think it's important to, you know, listen to them and try to be someone that they can lean on. Absolutely. Don't judge. Don't minimize. Um, And I was going to say too, try to encourage them too. you know, you definitely should have a life outside of your partner's anxiety. Like if your partner is experiencing anxiety 24 seven, please encourage them to go get help because that's not healthy for you. It's not healthy for them. So make sure that you have a social life outside of it. I would say, you know, my anxiety is obviously more a part of me than it is a part of Ryan, but we definitely will move on from it. I always tell him, thank you for being there for me and for supporting me in the ways that I needed it in that moment. And we we move on, you know, we're not constantly talking about this. We probably haven't talked about the 911 thing in a while because it's been a while since then. But I, I just, I knew it was something I wanted to talk about on here. And I, I knew it was something that I wanted to, I wanted to see what Ryan thought about it. I wanted to hear how he thought he could support, uh, how, how other people should be supporting their partner. And especially today when I was talking to my coworker and she was telling me about it, I was like, I need to talk about this and I need Ryan to come on too. So encourage them. Don't minimize their feelings. Don't judge them for feeling the way that they're feeling. Ask them what they need. Be there for them. And and just remember that life is not all about their anxiety. Or if it's you, it's not all about your anxiety. Find ways to get outside of it too and don't focus on it too much. So any final words, Ryan, or anything you think that they definitely need to take away from this? No, I think that's that we covered a lot. I think that's good. Yeah. I don't have anything more to add. And just remember, find a safe, a safe person. And even if it's you, like you're the partner listening to your other partner having anxiety, have another space for you to go and vent, whether it's a therapist or your friends or family, you know, ask somebody if they've got the space available for you to just be like, Hey, yeah, you know, so-and-so is having a really rough time and I'm kind of having a hard time dealing with it too. It's okay to also not know the answers. I would say that would say that's the other thing is if in those moments you're like, well, I I don't know how to help her. I don't know how to help them or how to help him. That's okay too. You can just say, you know, you, I'm not sure what to do right now, but I want to be here for you. I think sometimes that's enough. And then later on, asking for help, mentioning, hey, so-and-so really does struggle. Do you have any tips from somebody that you trust or somebody that you know is a good source? So in the end, if you're the one with anxiety, you got this. I know it sucks, but it's it doesn't define you. And you don't have to say, you know, hi, my name is Julie and I have anxiety. <laughs> you can say, I'm Julie. Sometimes I have anxiety, but there is way more to me than my anxiety. I am way more, way more than my anxiety. And if you're the partner, again, you don't have to say, hi, my name is Ryan and and my fiance has anxiety. You can say, I'm Ryan. I'm smart. I'm funny. I'm this and I'm that. And yeah, you know what? My fiance has anxiety, but we deal with it together because the anxiety doesn't drive our relationship. Okay? Okay. As always, if there's anything that you need, please reach out. My inbox is always open. If you liked this episode and you felt like it was beneficial and you like the way the podcast is going, please let us know. Give me five stars, likes, shares, all the things so that way I can continue making these episodes. I truly, truly, truly love these episodes. They 
they're almost like my form of therapy. I truly feel like I connect with so many of you and it just means a lot to me and I'm so thankful for it. So thank you everybody and have a great day.